Hi everyone, my name's Katrina and welcome to my September book haul. These are all of the books I acquired in the month of September. It's gonna be a long one, so get a cup of tea, settle in, if you got some snacks, I'm, uh, I'm gonna jump right into it. First things first, we have two copies of Vengeful by V.E. Schwab. I have the UK edition that I pre-ordered a little while ago and I also have the Owl Crate exclusive edition from the Vengeful box. I love it, it's numbered and signed. Yes please to all of the vicious things, so my collection for this series is a growin. It's honestly such a wonderful series. If you're into villains, anti-heroes, superpowers, it's gonna be your cup of tea. I also ordered myself one of the past Owl Crate boxes that was still available, and the box had From Twinkle With Love by Sun Geminon. I'm still waiting to read When Dimple Met Rishi. It's on my list. I definitely plan to do it. It's definitely gonna happen at some point, but I was also really excited about Sun Geminon's next book, From Twinkle With Love, and so when I saw that they had past boxes available, like the really summary one, with this book included, I went for it. I am so unorganized with this video, I apologize. I forgot to start off by showing you a quick overview of some of the books that I received in subscription boxes the past month or so. I did post videos unboxing the boxes that included these books as well as a bunch of other goodies, so I will have those, I'll try and remember, to link those in the description below. Back to business, the next book that I have is one that I received in an office book swap. So for the Indigenous Literacy Foundation Day, they encourage people to do book swaps and make donations and stuff like that. So at the Bloomsbury offices, we hosted a book swap, which was a lot of fun. And the book that I ended up receiving was The Penelope Ad by Margaret Atwood. Is that how you pronounce it? Penelope Ad? My co-worker who swapped this one has also written some annotations in the margins of this one, which has me very, very excited because I would love to go in and see the notes that she made. She didn't do it for the entire thing, more so towards the last third or a quarter. It sounds really interesting. It's the myth of Penelope and Odysseus from Penelope's perspective, which I really like the sound of. I also picked up a copy of American Hippo by Sarah Gailey. This includes the stories River of Teeth and Taste of Marrow, as well as a few other stories. I'm not sure if it's like additional short stories or whatever, but this is a binder. I'm pretty sure I bought this based on the recommendation of Emily from Possibly Literate. She talked about reading River of Teeth and it sounded so interesting so I decided to pick up the bind up since there were novellas. So these novellas are set in an alternate United States. I think earlier on in the 20th century there was an idea to introduce hippos into the Mississippi River. I think for a couple of reasons, one of which was to alleviate some meat shortages. This did not go ahead, but in American Hippo, this did go ahead and the hippos run the Mississippi River. It just sounds so interesting. I love the idea and the fact that it's a novella as well, well, two novellas plus stories, uh, has me very intrigued. Based on a couple of friends' recommendations, I also picked up Fierce Fairy Tales and Other Stories to Stir Your Soul by Nikita Gill. So this is a poetry collection all about fairy tales and I'm actually going to see if I can... In a twist of fate, the poem that I was going to go and search for, I actually managed to open it on the first try. So this is the poem that my friend told me to read first. It's called Take Back Your Fairy Tale and it's about Snow White and Sleeping Beauty who in their stories men kissed them while they were unconscious to awaken them, bring them back to life. And I'm not going to read the whole poem but the poem is basically saying to not rely on any man to save you, but instead find each other and wake each other up instead, which I really like the idea of. And it just looks so magical. There are illustrations scattered throughout. I don't really read much poetry, but I had my friend and Piera recommend that I pick this up. It sounds like my cup of tea. Next up, we have another book that has been recommended by Emily from Possibly Literate, and that is Amber Lowe by Lara Elena Donnelly. I can't remember exactly what the story is about, but we follow some interesting characters by the looks of it. There's a smuggler, a dancer, and a spy. The book is described as a vintage glam spy thriller. That just sounds so intriguing to me. I'm very, very excited. Emily has mentioned this in a few of her videos, so it kept popping up. So when I saw it at the bookstore, I was like, hey, comes highly recommended. 
I'm gonna give it a try. I also decided to pick up a copy of The Sudden Appearance of Hope by Claire North. So this is the author of The First 15 Lies of Harry August, which took me by surprise. I ended up really, really enjoying that book. And this sounds so intriguing. So we follow Hope Arden, who is the girl that the world forgets. And this is quite literally as well, like no matter what she does, what she says, the crimes she might commit, no one can remember who Hope is. It sounds like a really captivating story, maybe a lot of twists and turns. Either way, very mysterious and I really want to know more. So hopefully I can get to this one sometime soon. I also finally picked up a copy of Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. So this is a middle grade novel and thinking about it now, I don't think I've ever read the synopsis. What a turn of events, Kaz. You don't know about the book that you picked up. <laughs> I have to leave in 20 minutes so I'm gonna have to rush through the rest of this video I apologize but I've heard so many wonderful things about Nevermore it's one that has like from the get-go been compared to Harry Potter and that's never really been something that has enticed me just because Harry Potter is Harry Potter it's incomparable but in this instance a lot of people are saying like it's not Harry Potter but it's still freaking fantastic and the comparison doesn't really detract from your expectations which is Fantastic. Good to know. I also picked up a copy of Tess of the Road by Rachel Hartman. Initially I thought this was like a companion sequel to Serafina, but I think there's also another book following after Serafina called Shadow Scale. I'm just going to quickly take this off so I can investigate further because I'm very confused about how this ties into Serafina. I think how it goes is we have Serafina, which I read a few years ago and really, really enjoyed. There's the sequel, Shadow Scale, and then Tess of the Road returns to the world, but I don't think it's like following the same characters or anything like that. But there's dragons. How incredible is this cover? I'm a huge fan. And Piera recently, kind of recently, not really recently, <laughs> earlier this year, she read Tess of the Road and fell in love with it. And ever since then, she's kind of been pushing me to pick this one up. So I relented when she was in Sydney and I picked up Tess of the Road. <laughs> Next we have The Bone Witch by Rin Chapeco. I've been trying to get this book for a really long time. So I wanted to get the hardcover because I picked up the hardcover for The Heart Forger, which is the sequel. Essentially what happened was I ordered it from Booktopia. The hardcover was made unavailable, so they swapped it to the paperback and I didn't realize this. Then I received the paperback and was like, this isn't what I ordered and paid for. Returned that, ordered through Book Depository, book depository changed my address because there's, they've got some new system and I have to go through OzPost database. So OzPost has the wrong address for my workplace, which is just irritating. Anyway, they changed my address so I didn't receive the copy. I told them this. They sent me another copy. It turned out to be Pachinko. They sent me the completely wrong book. And then I was like, hey, you sent me the wrong thing. And eventually the Bone Witch came into my possession. So it's been a saga trying to get my hands on the hardcover of The Bone Witch. I was going to give up for a hot second. This is another one that Piera read and loved and has been recommending and pushing for me to get. So I did end up finally getting it. All I really know about this one is that there are witches. Necromancy. Ah, of course, The Bone Witch. This is one that I've been hearing really, really, really fantastic things about. Like I've only really heard praise about this book. Plus it is also absolutely stunning. So I ended up picking it up just based on everyone's recommendations. And then I got the sequel because I could get the hardcover from Kano for not too expensive. Is this the book haul where I buy every single book without knowing what it's really about? Maybe. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, we did a book swap in my office and one of the books that I was really interested in but didn't manage to get my hands on was The Immortalists by Chloe Benjamin. So after hearing about it and obviously one of my co-workers highly recommended it, I was like, mm, okay. I might actually pick it up myself because I've seen this in bookstores. The cover has really intrigued me and I just had never picked it up and actually looked at the synopsis. So I think it's about four siblings who go to a traveling psychic and each have their fortunes told. And part of this is that they're actually told on what day they are going to die. So I think it follows the four siblings and how they live their life depending on whether they know that they're going to die in a short amount of time or whether they're going to live a really long, long life. Basically the effects of that and whether or not that means Means they try and live life to the fullest, they live life recklessly, they live life really safely. And I think the book starts around 1969 and then spans about five decades following the lives of these four characters. Super intrigued by this one. I also decided to pick up a physical copy of Mythos by Stephen Fry. I am listening to the audiobook of this one, but I wanted a physical copy so I could kind of tab it up and like highlight some of the really interesting parts that I wanted to 
make note of. Um, the audiobook is absolutely fantastic because Stephen Fry is narrating it. But this basically goes into all of the details about Greek mythology, which I'm really intrigued by. I always really enjoyed studying ancient Greece in history back in high school, so I'd like to kind of remind myself about all the things that I have since forgotten since high school because <laughs> things went in one ear and out the other. Plus the hardcover is absolutely beautiful and I think Stephen Fry is coming out with another book kind of similar to this following Heroes, which I'm also really looking forward to. Next we have The Walled City by Ryan Groudon. So this is a book that one of my friends was getting rid of and I decided to pick it up. Oh my god, I forgot that she said it was signed! That's exciting! <laughs> this is set in the walled city which from as far as I can tell is like a really dangerous city to live in. The rules are run fast, trust no one and always carry your knife. And then we follow three different characters, some kind of interesting possibly shady figures. We have someone who is trafficking drugs, another character looking for her lost sister and trying to evade a bunch of street gangs, and another character who is trapped in a brothel. Sounds like it's gonna be a really really interesting one. Also claimed another unhaul book from one of my friends which is A Crown for Cold Silver by Alex Marshall. I can't remember why I picked this one up. Is this one of the ones that Pierre has read recently? Am I correct in thinking that? I've just been like really intrigued by a lot of the fantasy novels that Pierre has been reading and loving. So I often end up buying them. I have a feeling that I picked this up based on Pierre's recommendation alone. I also picked up part one and part two of Avatar The Last Airbender The Promise. I have part three on the way but if you guys didn't know, Avatar The Last Airbender is probably my favourite TV show of all time. I'm currently re-watching it and my friend was talking about how the comics continue on the story, they're really really good, and so I was like, hey, let's feed my obsession even more. I want to start them now, but I'm like six episodes away from finishing season three of the show, so I can, I can hold it in a little while longer. I also decided to pick up the manga of Kiki's Delivery Service. So if you guys haven't heard of a lovely, lovely booktuber called Chloe, Books with Chloe, she loves Kiki's Delivery Service, and I recently saw in one of her hauls or reading vlogs um, that she's been picking up the manga editions. So this is, I'm pretty sure that this is like a direct, like, translation of the film. It looks super cute, and Chloe can't stop talking about Kiki's delivery service. So I was like, hey, I'll give it a whirl. The last three books that I have here were sent to me by publishers. So thank you very much to these lovely publishers for sending them my way. The first two are unsolicited. We have A Curse of Ash and Embers by Joe Spurrier. So this is a witchy novel, which is like perfect for October. Though unfortunately I don't think I'll have the time to read in October, but adding it to my to-read list because I don't read enough witchy books. How interesting does this sound? So the like, little tagline is, some people knit socks by the fire at night. Gisha Blackbone made monsters. I also have Feminists Don't Wear Pink and Other Lies. This is curated by Scarlett Curtis and it has a bunch of essays from amazing amazing women. A lot of the essays are written by celebrities and online influencers and all other wonderful influential women as well. So this is super exciting. There's some pieces by like Saoirse Ronan, Ivana Lynch, there's also like an introduction to the book club Our Shared Shelf by Emma Watson. This sounds right up my alley. And last but certainly not least, the wonderful Hachette Australia sent me a finished copy of Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. This is the sequel to Strange the Dreamer and the final book in this duology, which is one of my favourite series of all time. I recently posted a spoiler-free series review of Strange and Muse if you want to know a little bit more of my thoughts about it, but this series comes highly recommended by me. I would urge you to pick it up. It is beautiful. The characters, the writing, the world, all of it is just wonderful. Anyway, I have to wrap this video up because I'm about to go to the movies, so I apologize that this was a little bit rushed, but I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I'll try and add Goodreads links in the description. I may forget, so just prompt me in the comments and I'll get around to adding those. But that's all that I have for now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you very soon in a new video, but until then, I will talk to you in the comments. Bye! <laughs>